The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the April 17th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, well, we've got you covered. Send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please please uh, put radio show question. And, of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a sea of red out there with the exception of the New York Stock Exchange. New York Stock Exchange is up 20 points. Otherwise, you've got the Dow down 41, s and is off 3, NASDAQ down 56, Russell is basically flat, Summers are down 61, Trendy's off 290. Gold is flat, silver's up 37 cents, Light 3 crude is off 79 pennies, natural gas is off a nickel, and the 30 year Treasury printed out at 114.12. Our leader in the clubhouse to the upside, well, that turns out that is Inspire Medical Systems. Up nearly 6% or 13 bucks. Upspot also up 13. That's a 2% move there. Eli Lilly up 11, 1.5%. 1 Mercado Libre up 760. That's a half a percent move. And United Health up 6 bucks. That's a 1 and 3 tenths percent move. To the downside, it's MicroStrategy up 67 bucks. Azimil Holdings down 64. That's a 6% move there. Ick Zoom Group down 44 bucks. 86%. Yikes. Lamb Research off 25 bucks. And KLA Corp down 20 as well. That's nearly a 3% move to the downside. So we've got movers and we We've got shakers. But let's begin really with the new information that is present, and that is coming from the daily Dow Equity Future contract. That is your lower left panel out here. So in this case here, we've got a TD9 count bottom that formed two days ago, completed two days ago is what I should say. And today, this morning, we've got a new profile out there. That new profile is bullish in structure. It has a buy zone, which is between 37,988 and 38,139. Right now, we are testing the lower end of that buy zone out there. If price today were to close above 38,139, that would be the center of its bullish structure profile. You know the routine. Really, you need too close above that. If you did get too close above that, that would suggest that price wants to rally up to the top of that daily profile at 39,345. But on the other hand, how about to the downside? And I would say if we get a close below 37,911, that's boys, that's signaling to us that the markets definitely want to move lower. Not that they don't, but it's the Dow right now that one should be focused on because of its bottom signal and because of that new bullish structured profile. And this one is a firm uh, bullish structured pro uh, structure profile. We don't have to wait until, or we shouldn't have to wait until 6 o'clock uh, this evening to see if it remains in effect out there. With regard to the other equity future contracts, you can see they are in A to B equal CD patterns to the downside. The one that was the strongest is morning was Russell 2000. We've got a request from John inside the Tigers in to take a look at that. Um, so we'll do that. But first, let's go switch over and take a look at the ES Mini, and then I'll put the Russell 2000 charts up on our screen for us. So let's go take a little deep dive down on what's going on intraday inside the markets out here. And the intraday charts, if you take a look at the bottom panel there, you've got 60, 30, 15, and the 10-minute uh, charts out there. We can see on the 10-minute chart, formed a road momentum indicator top, and then is now completing a TD9 count bottom. In the case of the 15-minute time frame chart, 
prices found support at its breakout level at 50.85. The 30-minute and the 60-minute time frame charts both have roads meant to indicator bottoms. That says if you see the ES Mini close below the low uh, from 2.30 this morning, that's at 50.75.75. We had lower out there. For resistance out here, uh, if we take a look at this morning, where was the resistance point? Turns out it was the top of that 30-minute profile. So the key area to be watching today, I would say, would be uh, the tick that was above that level, 9.30 this morning. That was up at 51.10, I'm sorry, 51.20.50. A close above 51.20.50 would say we had higher. A close below, again, the low of this morning. Uh, down at the uh, 50, 75, 75 level, says we had lower. Now we take a look at the little bit larger intraday charts, 120, 240, and 300. We have roads meant to indicator bottom patterns for each of them. So that says that that low that we just talked about out here, that is real key low out here, the low of this morning, because if we head below that, then we've got so many intraday charts that are telling us that bulls are trying to make a bottom. What we would learn is that the sellers have said, sorry, Charlie out there. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the ES Mini. I'll put the Russell 2000 charts. I had posted these in the den earlier this morning because they were the ones that were showing a sign of strength, so to speak. And we'll take a look at it. What I merely mean by that is when the market opened up, actually, you know, there's another set of charts I could go to. Um, we'll, we'll let these populate here because actually we had Brent call in yesterday. Uh, he was taking a, a long trade uh, inside the Russell 2000. I recall if he was doing it with options or how he was doing that trade now. But what I can provide to you, and you'll be able to visually see this yourselves, is the key resistance level. I think we identified the key resistance area inside the ES Mini, and now we're going to do the same thing inside the Russell 2000. And what I had posted inside the Russell 2000, uh, inside the Tiger's Den, was if we see a close above 2001. And 2000.60 is the top of the profile on the five hour and the four hour time frame charts out there. And that was really showing up as the key resistance area. And it's proven that that was a key resistance level. So, John, I would say still today, if we were to get a close above 2001, that would signify that the market is getting ready, or at least the Russell 2000 is getting ready to rally out there. No, I would say that the bottom signals are better on the intraday charts. Uh, for the ES Mini uh, than they are on the Russell 2000. However, we've got all kinds of A to B equals CD patterns to the downside intraday out here. So certainly we do have bottom patterns. For example, inside the Russell 2000 was noon yesterday on the two-hour time frame chart that generated that bottom signal out there. So Brent, if you are listening in, watch that 2001 level up uh, to the upside. And uh, to the downside, I would say the area to be watching is probably that low at about 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock yesterday morning down to that 1965.30 level. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the Russell 2000. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so that uh, took care. Of, I took care of that. Let's switch uh, back over now to the uh, to the black background charts for a moment. And let's go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced client oscillator, and see what it is doing out here. So we're going to switch over to the black background screens. We've got the New York Stock Exchange, advanced client oscillator. So we talked about how this got to below the minus 250 level yesterday, close below minus 250. That is in extreme oversold conditions. That not that's not just over. Oversold. That is extreme oversold. And we can take a look back at the uh, charts out here, and we can see how typically these bottom patterns have resolved themselves. It's really one of two ways. Either it's a straight shot out of here, and right now we don't have that as the signal, or it takes a period of days where we have a rising advanced client oscillator in the face of price moving lower inside the Russell 2000, I'm sorry, the Russell, inside the New York Stock Exchange. Now, it is trading up just a tad right now, and you can see we're trying to move off, or it's trying to move off that oversold reading out there. All you have to do is go back and take a look at history. When this, os when this oscillator gets down to that minus 250 area, there's a bottom that's trying to form over the next several days. Steve Roach with TFNN. Be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? 
one simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we kind of blew through that uh, New York Stock Exchange chart pretty quickly because we were up against the uh, breakout there. But again, just to uh, just to review for you, if you take a look at this, uh, this advanced decline oscillator, all that is, it's the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line, which is in panel number two out there. And uh, so it's a cool tool out here because it, it really helps us to understand what condition the market is in when it's oversold, when it's overbought. Overbought would be above that plus 150-ish area out here. But you can see when we start getting down to these levels, for example, last time they were down in this level was back in August of 2023. We did have price move lower, and we had a nice little counter trend rally out there. Uh, if we take a look at uh, time before that, it was during the time frame of uh, March of 2023. And again, price was moving. Even though I don't have that green line to the on the price side, you can see it was moving to the downside while the advanced client asset was moving to the upside. So this is only day number one. We're not through with the day. It's only 11:19 out there, but this does suggest that we should see some type of oversold rally um, form over the next couple of days most likely you can see here it usually takes a bit of time for example uh, the last one uh, that was of significance out here um, we had that uh, the advanced client oscillator closed what minus uh, 226 or so back on August the uh, 12th and uh, took until about August 24th uh, and so I don't know trading days uh, that were in there in order for the market to begin that counter trend move out there. So that's what's going on. We take that New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator. Let's take a look at a couple requests that have come in. Uh, the first one from uh, from John inside the Tigers. In fact, we only have two requests out there. So I can absolutely use everybody's help. Well, Peter, I got three requests now. That's great. Peter wants to take a look at the euro. So let's begin. No, no not the NQ. That wasn't the request out there. The request was to take a look at Nike. So if we take a look at Nike. What do we know about it? Let's open up this daily time frame and see what we can find out here. So is there a completed A to B equals CD pattern to the downside? I don't know, but let's just draw in the uh, let's draw that line in. Oops, pressed the wrong button. That's not helpful. Uh, let's try that one more time. So let's. Geez, that didn't work. There we go. So here is our A to B point. 
right there. I'm just simply going to go ahead and move this over. Take a look at this. Move this over to the uh, C point. And so we don't have a, a to, we don't have a completed A to B equals CD pattern. And it doesn't mean that we don't have a bottom. It just means that it didn't complete the pattern uh, that was likely out there. I don't see any other bottom signal. However, what Nike did do for its daily time frame, John, it generated a profile change in trend. And that's enough of a signal out there. And it did that on the trading day of April 11th when price closed above the profile. It did it again when it was tested and rejected on April 12th. And then even yesterday, price got down and tested the bottom of that profile, the bottom of that, or, I'm sorry, the top of that profile, which is 91.81. So we can see that resistance has been cleared on a daily time frame. We're trading above the oscillator and change line. So where's price headed to? Well, you do have this gap to contend with. And this gap, price gap down with 41 million shares. Today you were up with, uh, yesterday you were up with 10 million shares. So far today, you're up with 3 million shares. So you might be in a zone of uh, turbulence. In other words, if we were flying the jet, you know, the fastened seatbelt side would definitely be on. Now that's what the daily time frame chart for Nike is telling us. How about the weekly time frame chart? So let's open up the weekly. And did the weekly test that swing point? It looks like it did. Uh, it looks like it didn't. <laughs> Darn. So price is still trading inside this swing point. Now, the swing point I'm referring to is one from September 29th. Again, it's a weekly chart that we're looking at. Volume there was 75 million shares. Uh, two weeks ago, you pulled back with... Sorry, i got to move this over to the left. You pulled back with... Um, 52 million shares. Last week it was 49 million shares. So it looks like uh, sellers have run out of steam here. But until you clear that swing point, or at least clear the oscillator and change line, John at 95.61, um, you know you've got it's got to be a little bit concerned out there. So you're running into gap resistance on the daily time frame chart, and you're still inside that swing point out there that's been tested with lighter volume, but you're still inside there. So it just says. Caution, Will Robinson. If we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, you're trading below the monthly profile. And that says that price could go ahead and target that 84.11 area. Once again, we saw that back in September of 2022, price tested that level. It actually closed below it for one week, but then boom, we were right back above it that very next week with that TD9 count bottom pattern. So the daily looks good, except we're running into resistance. Let's take a look at the seasonal chart. All right, Johnny, let's look at that. Let's pull this up here for Nike, see what we can find out. This is over the period of the last 39 years. Now, one of the things that we can see out here is you can see that over 39-year period, the month that it really struggles with is August. But we're in April right now. And April's kind of a flattish type of a rally month. If we take a look at just the chart out there, you know, kind of flattish. So not no big zoom to the upside. You're coming into resistance out there inside of Nike. You're going to have to see how it deals with that uh, daily resistance zone out there. And for that, that's simply going to be between the level of – sorry about that. That's between the level of 95.17 all the way up to 99.76. And uh, so that's what I see when I take a look at Nike. Hope that helps you out, uh, Dan. Uh, no, I'm sorry. That was John who wanted Nike. Usually it's Dan that likes uh, Nike out there. Let's take a look at the uh, uh, the daily time frame dance steps out here. So, uh, you know, we just had a two-bar rally to the upside. Looks like today could be bar number three to the upside. And typically we see that uh, rallies here as of late have not lasted more than four sessions. Three to four sessions out there has basically been it for Nike. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks, as always, for the request out there. And Dan did want to take a look at something, and that something was IBRX. So let's get the IBRX screens up uh, so we can take a look at this. And uh, right now, this is trading at 521. There is a new profile that has formed, Dan, and this is above price. That is not necessarily what you want to see. Why? Because it sends the, sends the message of overhead supply. So you've got overhead supply. Resistance right now would stand at 537. Uh, if price can get above that, the next resistance point would be about 567. And above that, we'd be looking at 585. So immune bio for its daily time frame. Um, I have to assume that that is a sell the D point pattern. Let me just open up this chart. Yeah, certainly that completed a sell the D point pattern out here on March 22nd with that bearish engulfing candle. Um, and you trade below profile. So this is suggesting that what IBRX might want to do is pull back and test that 418 level. And 418 was the uh, TD9 count breakout area. On the weekly time frame chart, what do we have? We have a consolidation with inside its profile. And so the strong resistance level we can see is at 576. And the support area would be down at 405. That level has not been tested. Now, the monthly chart looks pretty good. 
It looks pretty good because he had a profile change in trend like four months ago. Well, really, really had it last month was really the confirmation. No, I take that back. You had a confirmation of that uh, breakout on De in December of 2023 out there. And when price pulled back, it found support basically at the top of that profile at the 350 level. So 350 is going to be a key level of support on any move to the downside out there. But right now, I think you just have to be cautious with regard to that new profile that is forming above price. Now, let me see if we've got enough data, IBRX, if it's even in the seasonal data out here. It's not. Uh, oh, it does. OK, let's pop. Let's pop that open. OK, I have to do it one more time. It said it had it. I clicked on it and I must have closed it. So, Dan, when we come back from this break, I will have, well, you'll actually be able to take a look at it. I think you'll be able to take a look at it, unless I've got some other requests out there, which I'll have to get those populated. But here is the uh, seasonal pattern for IBRX for uh, since its existence eight years ago. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Tigers, we have some exciting news. Live Trading Fridays are here. Join Larry Pesavento every second and fourth Friday of the month, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time, as he places short-term trades and gives insights into his strategies. That's right. That means the first Live Trading Fridays event starts this Friday, April 12th. Make sure to sign up so you don't miss the potential for huge gains. If you've attended Larry's stellar webinars before, you'll be familiar with the live trading portion. Live Trading Fridays will be strictly this portion. That's three hours of pure trading. All trade positions will be communicated clearly, and all questions will be answered in a timely fashion during these live events. When signing up, make sure to save $50 by using code LARRYLIVE at checkout. This code is valid only for this month, and the discount stays with you for as long as you're a subscriber to the service. So don't delay. Sign up, sit back, and follow Larry Pesavento as he places trades live. See you there, Tigers. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, uh, folks. And uh, Dan, if you didn't get a chance to uh, grab the immune immune bio uh, seasonal chart out here, here you go. April and the March are typically months where this thing struggles. Then May, June, uh, and then uh, November, December are its favorable seasonal time frames out there. So I just wanted to be able to share that with you. Let's go on. In fact, uh, P Peter's asking about the euro. So we could take a look at the seasonal tendencies for the euro as well. Uh, let's pull that up on our screen out here. We've got a lot of years worth of data, not nine years. We've got 24 years worth of data out here. So we take a look at this fact if I detrend it right now just to get a better feel. That's not really helping us out. So here the euro typically has a, a, a seasonally strong month, April. I don't think that's the case right now. Uh, so it's not really following along that seasonal pattern. But let's go take a look what the euro is doing out here on its daily time frame. Let's start with the daily. We'll pull this back. And what we'll see here is that the euro has a couple of different A to B equals CD to the downside patterns. Let's take a look at the big one first. And the big one starts back in uh, January, I uh, sorry, December of 2023. The B point is uh, February 14th, Valentine's Day in 2024. Now I'm just simply going to go ahead and copy. I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm just going to move that uh, over here so we can take a look at what the larger A to B equals CD price projection level is. Let's pull that back. It's down at around the buck five level. Now, there along the C to D leg, there is an A to B equals CD pattern as well. Looks like this after it formed that TD nine count bottom and had a nice little rally. Now, on this one here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move that over. So what this shows is there's two different A to B equals CD patterns out here, Peter, and they're both applicable. So if we get a bullish reversal candle today, what we can see on a daily time frame is this will confirm a buy the D point pattern. That's just really along that C to D leg. And what that would suggest to me is that price should then rally up to that oscillator and change line before it gives it up. Or maybe it rallies right up to the TD9 count breakdown level. Maybe old support becomes new resistance. That's at 107.32. So I would say if the, if the uh, euro is able to hold on to its gains for the day, it's signaling that it should rally further. If it rallies uh, further out there, we ought to see the U.S. dollar index begin to pull back. That's on a daily time frame. Now let's go take a look at the longer term time Time frames. Let's look at the weekly. On a weekly time frame, it's really showing us that A to B equals CD pattern that we looked at earlier. But the key here is price is trading into its swing point. It's actually tested the high. Oh, it has not tested. I take that back. So you want to watch how price should price move lower. You want to watch how it behaves at the uh, 1.06 uh, level. So far, we've only been down to a well. Boy, we've gotten close, but no cigar. 1.060, and what we've gotten down to is 1.06. Zero one, Jeez Louise, are you kidding me? Not kidding me. So we haven't tested that swing point out there, but if we do test and reject that level, that would add to the idea of a uh, bounce out there. But otherwise, it's suggesting that we get down, basically we test those lows from October 6th of 2023. That's the weekly time frame chart. Let's go take a look at a monthly time frame chart. What do we have out here? The monthly time frame chart is at a real critical area of support, potentially, and that is that red oscillator and change line. So, you know, we still have plenty of days left in the month out there. We're testing support or it's testing support out here. And we can see really kind of a sideways just move that's been in place out here, I'd say, since uh, January of 2023. So a sideways consolidation for the most part. Now, let's go take a look at what we've got going on intraday. Because on the daily time frame, we're taking a look at that potential bottom signal along that C to D leg. Do we have any confirmation of that? Well, if we open up a 30-minute time frame chart, um, we have a TD9 count bottom that led to a TD9 count top that took price back to its breakout level, and now it's dealing with resistance. So the resistance level, the clear resistance level on a 30-minute time frame, Peter's at 1.0645 out there. If price can clear that for two consecutive bars, you're off to the upside. Uh, what else do we see out here? You know, you see at 1.0665, you see the bearish structured, top of the bearish structured five-hour profile. Uh, at the, uh, the 240-minute chart, we've got that same level of resistance out here, similar on the 120-minute time frame chart. So the key area to the upside to be watching is going to be 1.065 out there. So, Peter, I hope that provided you with the information that you were looking for for the euro out there. And as always, thanks so much for playing in the game. Uh, give Stevie something to look at. Nancy is playing in that game as well. Nancy wants to take a look at NVIDIA. I believe the question from Nancy was, is this bottoming? Let me see, where was that question? Uh, has it bottomed yet? 
uh, keeps opening higher and then crashes. Well, let's go take a look at NVIDIA. That's not this chart here. Let's get to the NVIDIA chart. Give me a moment. We'll have that up on your screen for you. In fact, we'll also see if NVIDIA has a seasonal pattern. That's Hood. That wasn't it. Um, did I put it in? I did. Okay. So now we take a look at uh, NVIDIA. Let's see if we can pull up NVIDIA. Let's do our instrument searcher, NVDA, see if anything pops up. There we go. And let's just understand how many years worth of data we have, which is 25 years. Where are we at in a cycle? In the cycle, if I go ahead and put that detrending tool on, you'll see it real clearly here. The NVIDIA basically says, Nancy, seasonally speaking, over 25 years. Oh, what the heck? Um, is that it should move lower into about the April 26 time frame before it really begins its rally out. You can see in April that this uh, seasonally speaking over a five year period of time is when it struggles. So kind of the struggles that you're seeing uh, play out to what happens seasonally. But then take a look at May. May is basically May and December. I'm sorry, May and November are the two top performing months for NVIDIA. So just kind of keep that in your cap out there. Now let's go take a look what the charts are telling us. Well, we have a nice, uh, nice Rosemont Dominion indicator top that formed out there at the high on uh, March the 8th. And that's really led to just this little sideways consolidation pattern that's out there. Um, you know, you can see the rectangle if you just follow along my cursor out here. And you've got that nice TD9 count bottom. So price is trading into that swing point out there. And that swing point had volume of 50 million shares. Today so far, in just the first two hours of trading, you're at 20 million shares. So 20 times three is 60 million shares. What NVIDIA is telling you, Nance, is that price is pulling back into a swing point with similar type volume. Maybe it's more volume at day's end. If it is more volume at day's end and you do close inside that swing point, and that would require a close below 876.35, then that's telling you price wants to go down and test that low. Added to that is the fact that it would be below the bottom of its daily profile at 873.52. So at this moment of the game, at 1137, it looks like what price wants to do is move down to 830.22. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, price is just simply consolidating with inside its profile. But price is now below that green oscillator and change line. The green oscillator and change line on a weekly basis at 876.23. Let's open up this chart. We're a hump day. What we can see here is price has pretty much been above that level ever since January 12th out there. So price is losing its momentum. When it's losing its momentum, well, it adds to the t idea inside the daily time frame then that price wants to get back and test that swing low from the daily time frame. Again, that level was 830.22. Monthly chart. Uh, for NVIDIA, it looks pretty good. So if you go back to really the seasonal pattern that NVIDIA deals with here, you know, this suggests that we move lower again in towards the end of April. Again, take a look at May. It's one of its best performing months. And so if you're looking for a bottom out here, um, I would let things play out until towards the end of the month. That doesn't mean don't keep track of what's going on here. But right now, all the charts are suggesting that, yeah, this thing wants to get down and test that swing low. So, Nance, I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for. If not, let me know, and we'll get that to you. Take care. See Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets. 
with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds for both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, let's take a look at, oh, let's go out to uh, Philly and speak with John. Hey, John, thanks for calling and thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm doing very well. Uh, thanks for taking the call. And I wanted Hi. to ask you, Steve, about coffee futures. Yes. Uh, Steve, the lead contract right now, we're just in the middle of a roll process. So the active contract is the July contract at the KCM4. And, uh, Steve, I've been trading this uh, all year exclusively on the long side, uh, currently long and wanted to ask you if you could assess the daily and the weekly charts and tell me, is there anything in the work that you do that suggests to you a uh, uh, rally completion topping sort of thing coming soon? That'd be my question. And if I could just, uh, I'd like to listen off air to your answer, please. Absolutely. Hey, John, as always, thanks so much for the call. And uh, so I've got the coffee charts up on, on the white background screens. Now, for me to get the uh, today's data for coffee, uh, I would have to change data feeds. That would screw up everything. So what we're taking a look at is uh, as of last night's close. And John's specific question, is there anything in my work that suggests that coffee might top? And the answer would be, or when it might top, and the answer would be today. How about that? Yesterday was bar number nine of a TD nine count. Today is the bar following bar number nine. No, I realize that is the bar following bar number nine. So what that says is whatever today's high is, now I'm going to go switch over to the black background charts there. I've got the data feed that I need so we can take a look at that. But whatever today's high is, John, if price is able to close above that level, um, then that pattern gets negated and we continue to move higher. In fact, if you look at the weekly, well, let's do this here. Let's change screens um, because I've got more data on my other screen out here. So let me just move over to those black background screens. Here we go. And you'll see that uh, coffee is having a really nice uh, day today. It's had a really nice uh, week. It's had a really nice month. Uh, I mean, do we talk about a month? It's had one heck of a, a month out there. So now you can see today's activity. Today's going to be bar number nine. The present high out here, John, is 239.80. I don't know where the high ends up today. If it was the end of the day, if price closed above that level, that pattern gets negated. There's another pattern that is present on the daily time frame chart, and that's the A to B equals CD pattern. So for this, we'll go ahead and draw that in. We'll see where we're at along that move. Uh, looks like we're more than the one to one. Yeah, we're approaching the one to one point two seven two. Another way for you to consider playing this uh, is to uh, not sell until you see a bearish reversal candle to confirm that sell the D point pattern. So that's what I see when we take a look at a daily time frame chart. What we can notice here on a weekly and on a monthly, we're trading above all profile levels out there. Um, I do not have a um, I do not have a topping signal on the uh, day on the weekly or the monthly out there. You still have that A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. I think that's going to match what we just took a look at on the daily time frame. But just in case, let me just go ahead and put this one in as well. 
This will certainly give us the clear next price projection level out here. Now we'll see that that retracement, that B to C retracement was a 50% retracement. Folks, that's part of that signature is telling you that the A to B equals CD pattern is very likely going to do more than a one-to-one. -one. Remember, A to B equals CD patterns complete at the one-to-one -one level. This is per Larry's book back, uh, you know, many years ago, was about 60% of the time. I assume that they, he, did, he had done the work on that. The question is, what happens the other 40% of the time? How do we find a way to give ourselves a competitive advantage and being able to interpret the charts and what they communicate to us? Well, along that A to B equals CD pattern, that retracement is a real key level. You do less than 0.618, it increases the odds that you're going to do more than one. So here you can see that, yes, this is approaching the same A to B on the CD level that we took a look at on the daily time frame out there. So the only topping signal that I've got for you, John, is going to be that daily TD9 count pattern. So that's what you should uh, continue to watch. And maybe tomorrow, I, I wish I could put the intraday charts up on my screen for you. Maybe what I can do is when the uh, show is over and I close out all the charts, I'll get that other screen activated to do a multi time frame a chart for you on uh, coffee because you really want to start taking look at those intraday signals, right? If we're approaching the top, we would start to see those signals form on those intraday time periods out there. So I hope that provided you with, it, with the information you were looking for. And, and as always, thanks so much for the call. That was John in Philly. Let's go back to those white background screens. Let's start taking a look at the other requests that have come in. Um, and I don't know if this was a request or not, but as I was trying to go through all the dense stuff, uh, I saw that somebody was trading Hood. So if we take a look at Hood, that's an ETF out here, what we'll see is that price is below its uh, daily profile at 1815. We're trading below yesterday's low. Looks like what price wants to do is go target the 1623 level out there. Um, there probably is an A to B equals CD pattern. Um, out here, um, it looks like there's enough of retracement, and that B point I would be using for that is April the 10th, and that was 7.7 .7 million shares, and that was passed with 14 million shares. So that A to B equals CD pattern, we'll just go ahead and draw that in now that we know that information out here, and I'm just going to move that line over to the uh, to the C point of this move, and voila, where's it take us to? It takes us to that breakout area. So it does look like Hood is headed down to the 1623 level. If 1623 or that A to B equals CD decides to expand, then the next area of uh, support would be down at 1411, and that's coming from the weekly uh, bottom of its profile out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at Hood. Uh, that was for Jimmy, although it might have been a bonus out there. And no request. Dan in Chicago would like to take a long-term trade. When he says long-term, he's referring to two to three months inside of the TLT. And so for that, what I really should do is take a look at, so here's the TLT charts. The TLT charts say to you and I right now that that day has not come. And the reason it says that is because you have a new profile that is forming today, and it is above price. The bottom of the profile is at 80, 8962 and price is well below that. That tells us about overhead supply out there. The um, center is at 90.08, and then the uh, top is at 91.45 out here. I would expect if there were to be a further rally, we'll go take a look at the ZB out there, uh, that uh, you would run into resistance at about 90.08 on the TLT. But let's take a look at the 30-year uh, Treasury charts out here, um, which is primarily, just primarily, the, uh, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to put 30, I meant to put June. 24, um, is primarily the underlying instrument out here. So if we take a look at this, just curious, is this forming that new profile as well? So I don't see the new profile. I do see, and you see as well, a big A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. This is more than a one-to-one -one out there. It did form a buy the D point pattern. It did that back here on April the 12th, and then the very next trading session on the 15th, that negated that signal. So what this would need on a daily time frame at a minimum is you would want to see some type of bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom. So that bottom pattern isn't in right now, So I and I don't know when that might happen happen out there but that's what in essence what you would be looking at now the weekly time frame chart that has that TD9 count top has formed an A to B equals CD to the downside and if we take a look at what its price projection is let's put the A to B line in there let's move this over and take a look at this C to D so you're, you're at the one to one level so weekly chart also is suggesting needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom but right now or just yet or 1150 on April 17th, Dan, the, today is not the day. Marvin writes in, he's looking for a buy point on SMCI. So let's pull those charts up on our screen out here. And the buy point, so the buy point was about a week ago, it looks like. It was a TD9 count bottom out here, Marvin, that formed. It actually completed on the day of April the 12th. And that very next trading session, price closed below the bottom of its bull structured profile. 
but that was a uh, one hit wonder in fact volume on that day was 4.2 million shares going into 4.1 million shares interesting right now you've just got a consolidation with insiders profile we come back from this break we'll finish looking at smcr then we'll go take a look at goro ftco try to answer a question oh we've only got 10 minutes uh, we're going to try to take a look at as much as we can 10 minutes i mean just a few minutes really when i come back we'll be right back the gold report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back. So, Marvin, the uh, buy point on here, I would have to say, would be inside its bullish structured profile. Uh, it has found resistance at the top of its profile. So, that would be between the range of 889 to 926. Let's take a look at Goro, G O R O, for Marty. And uh, this is a gold stock out here. And if we take a look at it right now, what you've got is a Roseman to indicator top on the daily with price consolidating with inside its profile. Support is 49 cents, resistance up at 67 pennies. I don't see a topping pattern on the uh, weekly time frame chart. So uh, that's what I see. I apologize. We've got to go kind of quick here because the requests that have come in. And so I'd like to be able to just at least get to each of those. Uh, if we take a look at FTCO, Marty, that was also another request of yours. So here at FTCO, you can see an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. You've got a bar number eight, a TD nine, a bar number nine. You got a TD nine count top that formed on March 21st. It looks to me like what this wants to head to FTCO, that is, is $4.36. 436 is its breakout level. On a weekly time frame chart out here, why well, hasn't that populated? I guess it has, and it doesn't have any. Uh, Counts or anything. Okay, so right now, um, price 
should find support right here. If it's only a counter trend move to the downside, price would find support at the center of that bearish structured profile. And so far it has. That level to be watching is going to be at 461. If price closes below 461, that's certainly going to bring that 436 or maybe even 411 into play out there. So I hope that helps you out, Marty, with regard to those requests. And Ronin inside the Tiger's Den wanted to take a look at ticker symbol EPD. And EPD closed yesterday below its TD9 count breakout level at 2850. So when you close below that and we're down below it for the second consecutive day, suggest lower price. Now, today's going to become bar number eight. But in order for a TD9 count bottom to form out here, Ronin, you got to get below yesterday's low. It doesn't have to be today. It could be tomorrow. So maybe we come back to this uh, tomorrow or on uh, Friday out there and take a look at it. It's got the potential for forming a bottom. That weekly time frame chart's got a TD9 count top out there. And you can also see a TD sequential signal, number 13 out there. And that's something that um, someone in the Tiger's Den was looking looking for and I didn't write down who but I don't have enough time to explain that but maybe tomorrow we can go back to that folks have a wonderful Wednesday be safe out there and I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 11 a.m. on terrific Thursday take care